Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 226th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. <laughs> All right, and to start off, we have a lot to talk about in this week's episode, primarily related to jailbreaking. But before we get into that, I feel like we need a refresher. So, in the past 365 days since Pangu and Taiji's entrance onto the jailbreak scene, starting when Pangu released their first jailbreak utility for iOS 7.1.x, up until now, we've received more new untethered jailbreak utilities than really ever before, including for iOS 5, iOS 6, and iOS 7 because when the evaders were the primary team on the jailbreak scene, we only really received one new jailbreak utility per every major version of iOS. So for example, the original version of Evasion and Evasion 7 for iOS 6 and iOS 7 respectively, not including Pangu's first tool, which did jailbreak iOS 7.1.x up until iOS 7.1.2, the latest version of iOS 7, and then they jailbroke iOS 8 first before anyone with the release of their Pangu 8 jailbreak utility. So we're starting to become accustomed to these rapid fire jailbreak releases and I really think that that's a bad thing because again we have received more jailbreak utilities recently than we did for iOS 5, 6, and 7. And when you think about it, there are so many things that go into the creation of a single jailbreak utility. It takes hundreds of hours, if not more, from various things like security research to discover vulnerabilities to actually testing them, coding, and again, more testing. And while some of you might be aware of this because I have mentioned it before, others might not. So Taiji utilizes a single developer by the name of XN for jailbreak creation. And while they are comprised of more individuals than just XN, he's the one that's solely responsible for jailbreak development. So huge problems Props to him and Taiji, as well as two thumbs up to Pangu. They're doing absolutely excellent work and all for free. So that's another thing to keep in mind that we are receiving free jailbreak utilities and that these new teams are continuing that trend. So this is absolutely great. And we are going to receive a new jailbreak. Both teams are working on it. And I'm going to get into that in just a second because that is actually new information. But first, let's kind of back up a little bit to some iOS releases, which do relate to jailbreaking. So since the last episode of recording this series, Apple released iOS 8.3 to the general public. It's the latest version of iOS, and mostly it's known for introducing a new emoji selection method inside of iOS's default keyboard and adding more diverse options for some of the emoji. And other than that, it does introduce some general bug fixes and other small things like the ability to initiate speakerphone calls from Siri. For more information on iOS 8.3, be sure to check out the complete changelog on Best Tech Info. Like everything else discussed in this episode, I will have it linked to down below in the more info. And now, earlier this week, Apple did seed iOS 8.4 to registered developers. It's the first beta iteration of its kind, and really all it does is add a new music app, or rather, I should say, revamp the current music app in iOS 8. It adds some additional features to that and kind of fixes some general bugs related to the music app. So other than that, it doesn't add anything really. And while that could change prior to its inevitable public release with new beta versions. Right now, it's solely focused on Apple's music app and not even Beats music, which of course Apple does own Beats now. So nothing really too exciting, at least in my opinion. For those of you who do use the music app frequently though, it might be a nice update, but that doesn't mean that it's good for the world of jailbreaking. So what will happen? Will Taiji or Pangu opt to release a jailbreak for iOS 8.3, the current latest public firmware, or will they decide to wait for iOS 8.4? Well, right now we don't don't really know and we won't know until either team again releases a jailbreak they likely won't announce anything prior to the release of a new utility however in my opinion I think it would be best to just jailbreak iOS 8.3 and provide a solution for all of those who have been stuck without a jailbreak since iOS 8.1.3 patched the original Taiji jailbreak utility because when you think about it iOS 8.4 again just revises the music app and seeing as it does and that it doesn't offer any crucial fixes or changes that iOS is in desperate need of, it's likely that we won't see the firmware released to the public for some time, especially considering the drastic music app changes, Apple will likely want to extensively test it. So it could go through a number of beta releases. In other words, it might be a ways off. And if that's the case, again, it just further proves the point that Taiji or Pangu should release a new jailbreak for iOS 8.3, especially in light of the forthcoming Apple Watch. This is just a Pebble Steel smartwatch, but when the Apple Apple Watch is released, 
iPhone owners who purchase the device will be forced to update to iOS 8.3 because of course 8.2 is the latest firmware that introduced the new Apple Watch app which is required to properly use the Apple Watch. So we will have a lot of people jumping ship and leaving their jailbreak for iOS 8.3 unfortunately. And thankfully, Pangu is now back on the jailbreak scene. Now I did discuss this in my video covering iOS 8.4 beta 1, however I'm briefly going to go over it now, but if you want more details, be sure to watch that dedicated video. So kind of summarizing really quick for you guys, Pangu has had a lot of their time and energy taken up as of late by hacker Stefan Esser, commonly known online as Ionic, because in their original tool they utilized an exploitation technique that Ionic demonstrated during a mobile security research training seminar that Pangu attended. Since then, they've not only stopped using it, but they've offered numerous solutions to rectify the matter. Nothing will appease Stefan Esser, however, and now Pangu's just deciding, well, what the heck, we're going to put it behind us. And now they even said in their latest site entry that they are going to test some of the vulnerabilities that they've been saving on iOS 8.3. So this is absolutely great news, and hopefully they can collaborate with Taiji, because that's the reason Taiji even held the Mobile Security Summit 2015 to begin with was for collaboration between some of the top developers on the jailbreak scene. So we are definitely going to receive a new jailbreak. It's not a matter of if, but rather when. It's crucial that we exercise patience here because remember, creating a new jailbreak does take hundreds of hours, if not longer, and I will be one of the first to let you guys know when the new jailbreak is available, and I'll publish my untethered jailbreak tutorial immediately following its release. So be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. And now moving on, let's talk about Apple's worldwide Developers Conference, commonly referred to as WWDC, because they did announce that the conference will take place on June 8th to the 12th. And at the conference in years past, they've always used it as a platform to announce their next major software releases. So for instance, last year they announced iOS 8 and OS 10 Yosemite or OS X Yosemite. This year they'll undoubtedly announce iOS 9 and OS 10.11, both of which are rumored to be OS 10 Snow Leopard equivalent releases. And in Apple's invitations and announcements, they usually try to embed clues as to some of the key topics during their conferences and events. So this year's announcement graphic is no exception, and I actually created a dedicated video discussing it and what it could very well mean from topics including the Apple TV, iOS, and the Apple Watch, and how they all are intertwined. So if you want a thorough explanation, don't forget to check out that video because it's a pretty good analysis. All right, moving right along, last month during Apple's Spring Forward Media event, they also announced the new MacBook. It's not a MacBook Pro, it's not a MacBook Air, instead it's just the new MacBook. It features a 12-inch Retina display, it's the thinnest and lightest MacBook Apple has ever made, and it's also the only laptop that they've made that doesn't feature a fan. Overall, it has a great design, but it's full of compromises, and I actually outlined that in my unboxing and quick review video of the laptop because it wasn't released right away. Instead, it was released this week. So be sure to check out that video if you have yet to and you're interested in the laptop. I had some initial concerns about it. However, since then, they've kind of gone away. And if you wanna know why, be sure to rate this video up because I do plan on creating more coverage on this incredibly thin and light laptop. It weighs in at just two pounds. And again, it's also incredibly thin. So great design, but like I said, it does have its compromises and it's not without its it's Achilles heel being the processor. And now moving on, let's talk about the Apple Watch, Apple's next product that's set to be released actually next week, a week from today on Friday. Now since it was made available for pre-order last week, Apple did start to allow try-on and fitting appointments and I actually created a review video of my experience. So if you're interested in the Apple Watch, be sure to check that out. And also because of the Apple Watch and kind of where its release falls, I'm going to have to push back next week's episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. So keep that in mind. Now, let's discuss my iPhone 6 giveaway because I did say that it would conclude once Apple's new MacBook was released, and yes, that is the case. However, we are working on some things at Free Apps Fast right now. We're trying to get it fully functional on Android because I know some of my viewers actually don't have iDevices and I want them to have a fair chance to possibly win an iPhone 6 as well. So we're going to try to get that finished up this weekend and if we can, great, then you Android viewers will be able to enter the giveaway to potentially win an iPhone 6. If not, it will still conclude after Sunday. So keep that in mind, the giveaway is 
almost over so be sure to enter now if you have yet to you can't actually on this video simply by rating it up going to freeappsfast.com inside of mobile safari signing up for an account and then coming back here and leaving a relevant comment down below in the comment section containing your referral code which is the piece that appears down below at the bottom in the fourth tab after the link itself and kind of as we start to conclude here i wanted to mention one other video that i've released since the last episode of best tech and phone rumors it's one where i actually run over the brand new Samsung Galaxy S6. So don't miss that. The device is incredibly durable and I didn't do it because it wasn't an iPhone, but rather because I heard earlier reports of how strong and resilient the device was. So I wanted to put that to the ultimate test. So if you're into that kind of thing, that video can be found on my channel as well as linked to below. Same thing goes for everything discussed in this week's episode. And if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos like this one or videos discussing jailbreak updates or even tutorials on the next untethered jailbreak, and jailbreaks. Be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google+, follow me on Instagram at ICUID, and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.